Yeah, I'm not able to share my screen. I don't know why. Pidos pretty nas visis esi. Na vies exo. Stop share. Yes. 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 Sorry. Yeah, it says the organizer disabled the uh, the sharing of your screen. I don't know why. <laughs> So I have the option to share the screen, but I cannot do that. Uh, the host can give you the permission. Try again uh, to share. Yes, the now I can. Yeah. So can you see my? Yes, we can. Slide? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we cool. can. So everything is perfect. <laughs> okay. So uh, I am Gian Maria Bocchini, a postdoc at the University of Bochum in Germany, but the work that I will be presenting today has been carried out mostly do during my PhD at the National Observatory of Athens and in collaboration with the University of Kiel in Germany. Uh, before starting, I would like to acknowledge the contribution of several colleagues that are listed below. And I also like to thank the organizing committee and Professor Caputo for having invited me to give this talk on slab dynamics and seismicity distribution in the Atlantic arc. So the term, the term Atlantic arc is often used to refer to the earthquake shape of the Atlantic subduction systems, which is nicely visible by the curvature of the, uh, the Atlantic arc of the Elenites, which is the um, orogen associated to the Hellenic subduction system, and even by the distribution of the seismicity. So uh, the Hellenic subduction system lies in the Eastern Mediterranean region, uh, a region character uh, at the boundary between, uh, uh, at the convergent boundary between the African and the Eurasian uh, plate. The area is characterized by strong deformation, as we can see from geodetic data, and uh, uh, which depict the uh, which depict the spectacular countercloud uh, clock rotation of Arabia, Anatolia, and the Aegean with respect to Eurasia. So, with the, the velocity and the convergence that reaches uh, four centimeter per year in the Atlantic Trench. If we look a little bit more carefully, we see that these vectors increase towards the Atlantic Trench due to rollback of the slab. So the high deformation is translated in high seismicity in the Aegean region, with some of the most seismically active uh, region being the North Aegean Trough, the Corinth Rift, the Kefalonia Transform Fault, and all the area in the outer four arc from the Kefalonia Transform Fault to southwestern uh, Turkey, where the interplate seismogenic zone is located and where the, uh, the largest earthquake on Earth are expected to occur. And here, if we also pay attention, we see that the central Aegean doesn't exhibit strong seismicity, while stronger seismicity we are observing the southeastern Aegean and at the border between Turkey and uh, Greece. Here, I also want to uh, point on the presence of the Hellenic Trench, which is a, a peculiar feature of the Hellenic subduction zone, not seen at other convergent margins. And uh, that be, uh, at the beginning was uh, considered to be the subduction trench. Now we know that it is a, a morphotectonic feature. To the south of Crete, it takes uh, the name of Ptolemy, uh, Pliny, and Strabo uh, trenches. So how this beautiful area developed, it's, it has a very long sub, uh, history. And uh, seismic topography uh, res, uh, result tell us that the slab is visible down to 1,500 kilometer depth, which has been reconciled with the subduction of, of three oceanic basins and two interposed continental platforms since middle late Jurassic, so more than uh, 200 million years of uh, subduction. So the last oceanic basin, basin is still subducting nowadays, while the last continental platform is still subducting to the north of the Kefalonia transform. So since the development of the subduction system, it has been migrating south, southwest world. Here I want to focus on the last 35 million year 
And looking at the, the reconstruction proposed by Jolibe et al. in 2013. So if we look at 35 million years, it's more or less the time when the Pindos Ocean closed, namely the last oceanic basin uh, subducted consumed. Uh, uh, we see that the trench, this line with barbs, was pretty straight, and uh, as well as the, 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 the slab, this thick line here is the 100 kilometer slab as of that reconstructed by the position of the volcanic car. At 23, 50 million years ago, we see that the uh, oceanic lithosphere, which is still subducting today, started uh, enter the, the subduction. The curvature of the, the, um, uh, of the trench increased, as well as the slab uh, increased and started to migrate southward. And here we see at 50 million years the, 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 the appearance of a discontinuity in the slab between Turkey and the Aegean. At 10 million years, we see that uh, the North Anatolian fault appears in the system, but only at about 5 million years, it starts to interact with the Aegean tectonics. At 5 million years, we also see the development as of a second discontinuity in the slab in the area of the current uh, rift. So this is the current situation where we have our subducting slab uh, uh, separated by uh, two discontinuity, which represent the eastern and western termination of the Atlantic subduction. So, so how do we know about this discontinuity in the slab? A good method to look for them is seismic tomography. So at the eastern termination, we have almost no doubt about, uh, about the presence of a term between the Atlantic and the Antalya slab. However, what, what is still debated is the geometry of this feature. And since the pioneering work on step fault by Guvers and Wortel, it has been proposed that the eastern termination is a step uh, northeast uh, southwest striking step fault, forming as a result of the deeper tearing in the slab in the same uh, direction. The Western termination is a little bit uh, more uh, complex in terms of uh, that slab detachment, horizontal detachment, uh, vertical tearing, uh, or even smooth transition between oceanic subduction to the south of the Kefalonia Fault and continental subduction to the north of it uh, 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 can be present. And so, uh, yeah, so. Uh, uh, Moreover, uh, another kind of discontinuity has been also proposed looking at the, uh, based on the distribution of intermediate depth seismicity. And in particular, some people thought that the slab could be segmented somewhere between Crete and, uh, um, and Rhodos based on uh, 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 the geometry of the Wadati Benov zone and also in the, uh, in the intensity of seismicity. Here, if we look at this, uh, Figure, we see a pretty well defined Wadati Benioff zone to, uh, down to 180 to 200 kilometer depth. We see an, a steeper slab in the area of Rhodos, number four here, with respect to the west of it. And also, we see in this uh, Rhodos area a, a much uh, intense uh, intermediate depth seismicity. And also, as I mentioned before, we see a slab down to 1,500 1, uh, kilometer depth, while the Wadati Benioff zone reaches 180 kilometers. So from this short introduction, I, I formulated some of the, uh, of the open questions that I will try to address during the rest of my talk. So which is the geometry of the slab at its western and eastern termination? What causes the sharp increasing of the Wadati Benioff zone dipping angle from west to east, what controls the down deep limit of the Wadati Benef zone, and how are sub, uh, subduction related processes reflected in the distribution of seismicity. To do so, I used uh, uh, seismicity hypocenters from global and local networks. About the local networks, I had access to some of the best uh, catalogs available for the southeastern Aegean. And the idea was to refine the, 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 the geometry of the seismically active uh, slab, starting from uh, uh, available models. And then with the, the, the refined geometry, go to uh, uh, relate it to the distribution of seismicity, both at shallow and intermediate depth seismicity. Here I want to uh, clarify that the, 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 um, the um, 
the resolution of the slab, the model that we have, it's higher in the southeast energy and then to the west, because in the southeast we have access to local uh, uh, catalog from local seismic uh, networks. So now I start from the western termination. So here we see a plot of uh, intermediate depth seismicity at 20, uh, each at uh, ranges of 20 kilometers from 60 to 80 to larger than 120. So here is the location of the Kefalonia transform fault. So if I would trace an ideal line on the continuation of the Kefalonia transform fault, we see that south of it, we, we have a seismically active slab, while north of it, we have a seismically not active slab, and this reconciles well with the presence of continental lithosphere and oceanic lithosphere. So the Kefalonia transform fault can be interpreted as step fault link at the boundary between oceanic and continental lithosphere. So if we look in the literature, this prolongation of the Kefalonia transform fault, it could be the Tesprotico Alakmon fault zone which activity terminated about 3.5 million years when the Gulf of Corinth uh, started to open. So here also, if uh, we see that, uh, and so the Gulf of Corinth, sorry, could have uh, uh, caused the migration of the strike slip deformation from this online structure to the Kefalonia transform fault and may even control the fact that the Kefalonia transform fault doesn't prolongate more uh, inland. So here it's also nice to notice how the, uh, the Corinth Rift is located in an area separating uh, to the south, we have a, a uh, deeper Wadati Benef zone, while north of it, the, the Wadati Benef zone reaches only 100, 120 kilometers of depth. So in the area of Peloponnese, we performed some tectonic reconstruction, and we could see that the down deep extent of the uh, Wadati Benef zone is consistent with the amount of subducted oceanic lithosphere since about 15 million years ago. I didn't put more detail on this, but I have some slide in the end. If you like, we can discuss about that. If we move at the eastern termination, which is more relevant for the uh, uh, workshop of today, we see beneath south, uh, uh, be in the area of Rhodos, the presence of uh, a clear uh, northwest dipping uh, Wadapi Benef zone, and which it's not compatible with the presence of a step fault in this area of the uh, Pliny Strabo Trench, because if a step fault is here, then we don't expect subduction in this direction, while we see it from seismicity. Then we have a northeastward dipping slab beneath uh, Turkey. This is the Antalya slab. And then between them, we see an area depleted in intermediate depth seismicity, with, which corresponds with the slab tier. So we can refine the geometry of the tear down to 180, 200 kilometer uh, depth. As I mentioned, at the eastern termination, we had also available uh, local seismic uh, network catalogs. In particular, this is the Agelados catalog and the Signet catalog here. So we see uh, uh, refined uh, models of the Wadati Benef zone, which is less steep and less active in the area of Crete, profile one here, while it gets steeper in the area of Rhodos and more active. And then if we look, we notice that in between these two segments, we started to observe a double seismic zone that we went there to investigate a little bit more. And after, uh, uh, yeah, here we see an overlapping of the seismicity along profile one in the area of Crete and the area of Carpatos Rhodos. Here we see at a depth larger than 60 kilometers a clear offset in the Wadati Benef zone and also a clear dis uh, uh, distinction in the activity uh, rates. So, after excluding that it could be a double Wadati Benef zone, we interpreted the upper plate of our double seismic, uh, ses seismic zone as the top of the slab in the western part in the area of Crete, while the, the lower uh, seismic zone as the uh, top of the slab subducting in the eastern part. So if this is true, then this is, will be also compatible with the long strike shortening of the slab, which is nicely uh, uh, visible from the inversion of focal intra-slab intra focal mechanism solution. 
So by combining all the information coming from the seismicity, we propose a new uh, refined slab geometry. So I walk you through, through the most important part of the model. So in Northern Greece, we used uh, published data from uh, receiver function because uh, the slab, uh, the continental uh, slab here is not seismically active. Then moving towards source, there is a, a, a vertical discontinuity separating this continental slab from the oceanic slab. Then uh, we have the Kefalonia transform fault that lies along the north edge of the oceanic slab and represents a step fault. Then moving towards east, we have the first order segmentation of slab with visible at depth larger than 60 kilometers, separating a shallower and wider segment from a, a narrower and a steeper segment. And the causes of this segmentation could be due to the aging of the slab from west to east, as nicely shown by also, for instance, uh, seismic uh, magnetic, sorry, magnetic data, which indicate a, a younger slab in the Ionian area and older slab in the Erotobus uh, basin. And then we have the tear in the slab separating the Hellenic slab from the Antalya uh, slab. So the, the, the formation of this tear in the slab together with the, the, the first order segmentation announced the curvature of the slab and also the asymmetry in the curvature that we see today. This is nothing else than a 3D model of this 2D uh, map view and uh, with the gray are the expected mantle flow uh, in gray here and while in white we have the relative motion between the different uh, uh, segments. So we wanted to check how this, uh, the, the geometry of the slab relates with the distribution of seismicity. What we see in this picture are uh, several seismic profile along strike. Uh, and uh, uh, for, uh, we tried to separate interplate seismicity from intermediate depth seismicity along this four profile. And we see a clear uh, inversion in terms of uh, released seismic moment in the segments lying above the western slab segment and in the segment lying above the eastern slab segment. Namely, to the west, most of the uh, seismic moment is released by interplate event, while going to the east, we have a more uh, and higher release by intermediate depth uh, events. So this slab segmentation affects the moment release of interplate and intermediate depth seismicity in the Atlantic subduction uh, system. Also, we wanted to check, uh, as uh, if you remember in the first slide, I showed how the central Aegean doesn't exhibit strong seismicity, while stronger seismicity and stronger deformation is visible in the southeastern uh, Aegean. Here, uh, we try to reconstruct the deformation pattern, combining uh, seismicity data, uh, 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 focal mechanism data and uh, geodetic uh, data. And all together, this seem to indicate the detachment of the southeastern Aegean with respect to the central Aegean and Peloponnese. Here we see these velocity vectors uh, with the velocity increasing towards the trench that would be compatible with the presence of a steeper slab in the area and with enhanced rollback. And also this focal mechanism, some also from recent earthquakes here, they are compatible with the, this interpretation of uh, detachment of the southeasternmost part with respect to the central and the uh, Aegean and the Peloponnese. So this slab segmentation seems also to affect upper plate uh, deformation, giving rise to high deformation in the southeastern uh, Aegean. So here I come to my conclusion that uh, I wouldn't go to them to leave a little bit more time for, uh, uh, for discussion and question you have. Basically, it's a summary of what I have been telling during my presentation. So I would like to thank you for your kind attention and uh, I'm uh, here for uh, trying to answer your questions. Uh, third, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. I have uh, a question from Alexandros Katsipetros. Do you have any information on slab uh, tearing or slab uh, delamination in Central Aegean, north of the area you presented? Yeah. Jan Maria. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I under, so if I have some evidence for slab tearing and segmentation north of the area I presented. Is it this the question? Uh, if you have uh, any information on slab tearing or slab delamination in central region, north of the area uh, you presented. I mean, there are now some uh, new studies from uh, full waveform inversion where they present these nice uh, models for, uh, but it's more about the area of the Kefalonia fault and the current, uh, current rift. About uh, uh, slab delamination, I think in the northern Aegean, I mean, people can see that. And it's only the only way that you can explain also the subduction of uh, continental uh, lithosphere, which is going down somehow. And By the way, uh, the strike slip fault you presented of the Aliakmon in central uh, continental Greece uh, is questionable. There is no yeah. clear uh, field evidence for this uh, yeah. fault. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I put a dot line and I mentioned that it could represent this fault, but I mean, we don't know that if this could be the, the answer. Okay, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Please. Uh...